All right. Well, according to deep, <clears throat> excuse me, Connecticut's forest coverage remains <clears throat> remarkable, but insects, <clears throat> weather, and development are continued threats. There is something that's called a forest action plan that's created every 10 years in order to get key federal funding. And joining us now to talk about this version of the plan is the executive director of the Connecticut Forest and Park Association, Eric Hammerling. Eric, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, first things first, I'm guessing a lot of people don't know what the plan is, ourselves included. So just try to go into a little depth about what the plan is and why it's so important. Sure. Well, I'll start with why it's so important, because if you think about trees or groups of forest, uh, groups of trees in a forest, they provide tremendous benefits to people and to the environment. So, for example, think about the importance of trees to keeping our air clean or our water clean or providing shade or providing wildlife habitat or providing uh, wood for wood products uh, and providing uh, renewable but resources and jobs for people who are working in the woods. So our, our forests are incredibly important for lots of reasons, and that's why it's important to have a plan that is thinking about how to keep these trees and forests healthy. Uh, there are a lot of things that are challenges for our forests. You mentioned uh, a couple of them. Certainly forest pests are taking a toll, and people can certainly remember problems we've had with gypsy moth or emerald ash borer uh, or other forest pests. Uh, we have to uh, be able to respond when there are uh, mortality events with trees, and the plan gives some insights into what to do there. The plan is also really important to provide uh, a, a, some background on what our forests look like. Um, we have about 59% of our state is covered by forest, which means we have to be really good stewards in thinking about how the forest will survive into the future um, and what we can do to make a difference. Uh, there are a lot of things we can do as individuals, as uh, the state of Connecticut, um, and the Forest Action Plan, because it happens once every 10 years, is a great opportunity for people to talk about um, how they can make a difference, how the state can make a difference, and we encourage people to get involved. And how do people get involved? Mm -hmm. So there is uh, a, an opportunity for public input. In fact, uh, last year, CFPA hosted six different events uh, to get input from the public. And uh, coming up uh, later today at noon, there is a webinar to talk about um, the, what the draft forest action plan looks like to give a last opportunity for public input uh, by December 11th. And people could submit that uh, too deep by email if, uh, if people are interested in more information on the plan or how to submit information, they can go to the CFPA website at ctwoodlands.org, and we'd certainly encourage people to do that. Right. CTWoodlands.org. Thank you so much, Eric, for taking the time. It's just one of those things that's probably so vital to our well-being that we don't stop to think about and appreciate that you need to take active steps to maintain and protect it. So thanks for uh, giving us that heads up.